Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, uh, which is hosted by the Product School. My name is Alina. I'm a machine learning product manager in Booking.com, and I'm going to talk to you about the ML products and how to build them in the ever-evolving generative AI era. So a bit about me, my name is Alina. I'm currently a bit over one year in Booking.com um, as a machine learning product manager, um, overlooking different uh, kind of content, ML uh, models. Um, we're building models uh, around NLP and computer vision and kind of serving them across the business um, according to user needs and business impact. Uh, previously to that, uh, I was also a product manager in eBay and also in RapNet, um, overlooking similar products in the ML area around computer vision and also some search and platform capabilities uh, in RapNet. I have a BA in visual communication. Yeah, so let's look at today's agenda. Um, so I'm going to kind of walk you through the generative AI um, um, landscape, uh, a bit about my experience uh, as a PM in uh, in my current company, but also in the previous ones. And yeah, with all the hype, all the trends around AI, generative AI, how can you as a PM adapt to it? And uh, I want to give you my tips around it. And a few things about kind of what you can do with it and what's next in this uh, area. So with that, uh, let's start with a simple definition. So generative AI is uh, generally speaking a type of artificial intelligence and AI uh, technology that can produce various types of content as an output. And we, we can uh, look at some examples uh, right now. So we have uh, outputs, possible outputs, uh, like an image. Why not, you know, asking AI um, to to have their own interpretation into a very famous uh, painting, such as the Mona Lisa, how it can look like beyond the, you know, the face that uh, we all familiar with. Uh, I'm sure you've seen a lot of uh, um, AI art, um, around the internet uh, in the past couple of months, but it's truly interesting and uh, fascinating. Text is an obvious out output. Again, I'm sure you've seen many, many Reddits around the uh, possible outputs of uh, ChatGPT uh, or generative AI. So could be um, mainly a text output about, let's say a poem, a story, a recommendation, um, conversation and yeah, answering basically any question that you might ask it. Here's an example of a, a poem about a cat and a mouse. And there's much more. Uh, so it's really evolving all the time and they're releasing uh, new versions all the time. And um, there's possible outputs around code. Um, so generating pieces of code optimizing your code, completing your code, uh, reviewing your code, uh, music, videos. Yeah, we've seen a lot of those um, also around the web. So it's truly, truly an interesting era, as you can see. So yeah, with that, when did I kind of notice that it's really becoming a wide public spread uh, um, topic and everyone is talking about. So I got a message from my mom uh, asking me if I heard about this like latest thing, chat GPT, and that she's been using it. She's been asking it questions, recommendations, recipe, uh, I don't know, like travel recommendations or just some basic questions. And, you know, she played around with it. So, that, I think that was truly when I recognized that it's becoming a really massive thing, you know, beyond hearing it from my colleagues and from the industry. But yeah, the point where my mom tried to use it and she wasn't scared of it and she knew how to use it. I think that was kind of the turning point uh, for me 
understanding that it's really everywhere and it's here to stay. I think the really kind of important shift that happened is uh, really chat GPT, uh, which I'll touch upon later, but it became really accessible to everyone and everyone, like it's free to use, everyone can use it. You can ask a question, the interface is quite simple. And I guess that's how it got to my mom as well. It's quite helpful. It gives you meaningful answers uh, to your problems or just like any just FAQs that you had. Um, and it's, it's a very human-like interaction. Um, so yeah, like you get a, it can be funny, sarcastic, scary, but uh, overall it's something that is very familiar to us and I think it makes it easier for us to interact uh, with the chat GPT. Yeah, so with that, I think uh, we've all noticed, and I'm going to cover it a bit, that there has been an era or a stage uh, between some of the tech uh, giants and that I think we can call as the race for AI at this point. And just going to play you a short video uh, before I dive into that. AI, 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 generative AI, generative AI, generative AI, AI as AI, 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 it uses AI to bring AI, 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 AI. Yeah, so that was Sandal Pichai, uh, Google's uh, CEO, and one of the recent uh, uh, recent conferences they had, uh, kind of uh, introducing their their product, their AI generative AI product. AI, AI, AI. AI. Yeah, so let me just give you some uh, maybe overview of who is in the race of AI or who are the main players in it. And um, just to give you an idea where we stand. So obviously we have OpenAI and um, they are the uh, creators of ChatGPT and DALI2. Um, and um, they've been heavy, heavily invested by Microsoft. So there's been like, I think around 30 million billion investment uh, by Microsoft in that company. Um, their founders are um, Elon Musk. Uh, I think this one, this is the most famous one. And they've been recognized as the fastest growing consumer app in history. So they reached to 100 million users um, within a month, a ma month and a half or so. So truly, this is kind of the first interface that got out uh, to the market. And they just developing since um, new versions of their models and you know adding new capabilities next we have uh, google or uh, uh, alpha alphabet where they have uh, uh, the bard ai um, model that they also recently released basically it's a conversational chatbot as well similar to, to chat gpt it's uh, also powered by a large language model, LLM, uh, Lambda, uh, which is basically part of this like foundational models umbrella uh, that you will hear about. Uh, basically, they're trained on very massive uh, um, data sets and they, their goal is to interpret a natural language and understanding and processing and this is the basis for, for all of these uh, companies and their AI race. We also have a few kind of smaller players, you can say, but uh, we have Meta with their Llama model, which is also similar to a kind of a chatbot. So they have question understanding and uh, answering, sorry, natural language understanding. Um, it's an open source model and Amazon released uh, their bedrock uh, kind of service where you could build your generative AI applications um, using their platform, ML platform and AI platform services. So I would say that from my interpretation and the industry interpretation, uh, kind of OpenAI, Microsoft uh, versus Google, those are the two major ones. 
and we should keep an eye on those um, out of everyone that's out there. So now that we kind of, I think, realize that um, it's really in the tech giants uh, company priorities, uh, it's becoming their uh, kind of full-time investment um, re in resources investment wise. And also, uh, you know, they really identify that there's a big uh, business impact that they can do with those models. Um, it's inevitable that you know your role or your uh, your p your role as a PM or your company at some point probably looked into that uh, uh, new information and trends. You've probably been even affected by maybe changing your roadmap or uh, company priorities. So I really want to touch base on that. And what is from my perspective, how do I see the PM role um, in this AI new landscape, generative AI landscape? So I would say that the things I would list here are probably um, generic also when there is no AI special time, but I would give uh, specific points on why I think it's, it is unique to you know, the AI uh, era. So as a PM, you always need to kind of stay up to date to, to some technologies, uh, to your competition and product developments. But here it's really, um, even more important, like because the trends are shifting so fast, there's new releases every few weeks, days, month, uh, and you know more and more companies are joining the the race. Um, I would say you really have to stay up to date with the technology, and understand what's out there, what's being released, who are the main compet competitors and leaders, um, understand some basic uh, kind of uh, terms, uh, as in. Generative AI, large language model, foundational models, prompt engineering. Those are some of the basic terms you will have to um, familiar yourself with. Um, that would basically allow you to evaluate and assess the options and the technologies that you have in front of you. Um, so you would have to you know, select the best technology that you would like to use according to your use case. Uh, you will need to evaluate your data, your current data source determine the quality of your data, um, how those models perform, um, and yeah, basically going through evaluation process, uh, which by the way, uh, also includes costs. So there's a lot of, uh, a kind of uh, cost calculations that you have to do uh, with, those uh, with those new technology. So make sure you're on top of that as well. And just to touch upon uh, the last point, which is the ethical implications. So not every company has uh, its own kind of an ethical AI, uh, let's say, uh, group uh, that oversees all the, all the models and make sure there's no biases and, you know, we're really building the right thing. So really make sure that, you know, there's no um, issues in that area. As we know, the models have some uh, have some uh, drawbacks like uh, like hallucinations where they can make up things uh, and yeah sharing correct information so really um, keep an eye on that as well in your evaluation process yeah and the last point is you will really try to identify your potential use cases is it you know okay there's a trend with generative ai but can you does it apply to your use cases? Can you, uh, is it relevant for you? Is it relevant for you, your users? Are there user problems and scale that really needs to use, uh, you know, this technology? So I think it's also part of the uh, assessment that you need to do. And of course, product up and test quickly. So once you identify the use case, you evaluated uh, the technology, um, try to kind of, and measure it and assess it with real users. It could be internal employees, some beta users. Um, but yeah, try to gather feedback as, as quickly as possible and uh, test your hypothesis uh, with your use case. So yeah, like I said, it's kind of a generic uh, um, tips that you can use, but I do want to uh, also um, dive deeper into some practical tips that you, you can do um with this new technology 
So again, this is like based on my experience, but um, um, you can adjust it to your, your kind of, uh, you know, your work, uh, the way you work and, and your company um, process. So I would advise you to either create or join an AI task force. So if there's nothing at the moment, uh, maybe you can come up with one. It could be even on the level of, you know, sending out like, uh, weekly updates or having a weekly kind of team meeting uh, between all the relevant um, uh, colleagues uh, that are interested in this and um, leverage some, you know, uh, company communication channels. It could really, I think, add to transparency between all the all the different teams that are trying to assess or work on the same thing as it's really new kind of technology. I would advise you to try and create a special kind of task force or join one and as i mentioned um the new technology especially if you're a pm uh, a machine learning pm i think it's really inevitable that you would look again at your roadmap um assuming that you've built a yearly roadmap or even it's if it's like a quarterly or a half year roadmap i would I uh, really advise you to look at it, revisit it, review your existing capabilities, plan the capabilities, uh, your objectives, and try to understand how you can, you know, uh, leverage the, the new technologies, the new Gen AI technologies, uh, come up with workshops with all your uh, stakeholders, and um, yeah, yeah, see whether you need to change your roadmap based on that. Um, the last two points are uh, about, yeah, taking the small step approach. So, yeah, if you want to test out the, the actual new technology, the model, uh, you can start with really a small uh, data sample. You don't have to, you know, acquire any new technologies. You can use an open source uh, um, um, LLM and try to evaluate it. Uh, you know, ChatGPT is really accessible. It's a front-end application. You can really uh, try it out by yourself even. Uh, but yeah, make sure that, you know, follow the company guidelines around that and everything. But uh, you really can test it out even without any um, dependency in, in other teams just to try out the output, see how it works, whether you can really uh, leverage it to your uh, use case. And yeah, focus on the high impact use cases. And uh, I would emphasize that again, try and find uh, maybe a generic problem, a generic area in your uh, company where really you can leverage the uh, Gen AI capabilities. Um, try to solve for a real user problem and answer user needs. So yeah, it can be in any area like customer service, uh, content creation, marketing department really depends on, you know, what's your area and your product. Um, I do want to cover maybe a few like specific use cases from my perspective and from, uh, you know, um, things I've been following and maybe just leave you with some ideas on what could be possible opportunities and use cases when you're working with Gen AI. So I think I from the customer perspective um i already mentioned that it could really help make your any customer interaction you have across your product uh, or platform uh, more human-like which really adds value and interest from the customer uh, perspective um think about like your customer support areas any incoming messages from your customers or between your customers um it could really kind of ramp up that experience and make it faster and more accurate can help you prioritize some of the incoming requests or tickets from your customers so i think that area is really uh, something that can be useful and yeah of course like if you're dealing with content uh, you can really create a personalized experience for your users you can ramp up your recommend product recommendations if it's uh, e-commerce or you know anything else uh, I truly really think that this is the area to to invest in as well. If you're a product in that uh, area, from the product and ML or like data scientists and development engineering teams perspective, 
I think that uh, like as a product, again, like it really helps you to test your ideas. Uh, you can simply use ChatGPT and try out your idea and, uh, you know, maybe create an MVP uh, based on the outputs um, and even get ideas from ChatGPT, you know, or any other uh, kind of interface uh, for your uh, product roadmap or ideas. Um, as a developer, I think that, yeah, it would truly uh, also help with some uh, creating, like generating some code templates. You could create test cases or improve your, uh, uh, the quality of your code. And it could help you like translate your code or autocomplete it and, and so on. And for the ML part or data scientists, you could really use GPT or other LM outputs and to fine tune maybe like internal and models or existing capabilities that you already have. Yeah, so th those are a few ideas, like scattered ideas around the areas where I think, um, you know, maybe it could give you some uh, direction where to start. So maybe if you're a PM in marketing department, think about how you can create some marketing ads using uh, um, generative AI. Um, for customers and for users could be anything around Q&A, FAQs, creation, generation, um, product descriptions, you can improve them, you can uh, personalize them. So it really falls also under content personalization, product recommendations. So yeah, if you're uh, looking to build a recommendation engine or based on a, you know, a search input, you could really uh, leverage that experience with Gen AI. And of course, the customer support area, which I mentioned, where you can really also enhance that experience and um, make it more human-like, uh, fast, and more accurate for your users. So to recap, uh, I'll leave you with a few points. So as you might notice, uh, Gen AI and the race AI is here to stay. I would advise you to join a relevant forum, create one, create a team around it, really to stay up to date and have everyone updated uh, on recent developments. Um, I really believe strongly that it's a good opportunity to revisit your roadmap, re revisit your uh, priorities, and, you know, it's a new opportunity to identify high impact uh, use cases. And you, I think you should uh, keep uh, keep on uh, taking the small step approach, uh, you know, regardless of AI, but I think you can really test out your ideas and um, um, using even chat GPT, as I mentioned, and try to go for a small MVP uh, based on that. And, as you've seen, you know, the diversity of the uh, Gen AI capabilities is, is quite vast. So really identify the one opportunity that matches your users, your objectives and company priorities and work around that. So I think that's all. Yeah, and I'm leaving you with a few resources, uh, some YouTube channels and news, PM newsletters that I think are um, interesting and entertaining and a few podcasts, which I think you can mostly find on Spotify. So thank you everyone for joining and thank you for uh, Product School for uh, hosting me. And if you want to contact me, ask any questions, give any feedback about this uh, talk, please do reach out on LinkedIn. And um, yeah, thank you very much everyone. Goodbye.